the hell is that? The breeze has completely died off and we're just bobbing along up Shit Creek without a paddle, so to speak. Reluctantly left beautiful Malta and set off on our 300 nautical mile journey to Sardinia. We shared an amazing sunset with this monster of a ship, and little did we know she had left us a present overnight. I'm just putting on this preventer just because we were bouncing around a little bit. I didn't want to break our new gooseneck. So, I was something on our An boat. accident. Wow! What the hell is that? It looks like oil. Is it oil? I woke up after my two hour sleep and the captain was still scrubbing off the oil. We scrubbed for another four hours before it actually came off and thank God there were dolphins. The well was building rapidly throughout the whole passage and by the second day it was pretty large. We had been relishing the sailing so far on the passage, but by the late afternoon the party abruptly ended. We got, yeah, we got 12 knots of breeze on a beam on a beam reach, and life appears to be good on the surface. Yeah. But how are you feeling, Jackson? This has been such a hard crossing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Given the fact we were supposed to be in Sardinia last night, so last night was Friday. Our mates Luke and Ben are waiting for us. It's now Saturday and we're due to get there about midnight? Yeah, yeah. we'll arrive about midnight, probably about 18 hours late yeah. than we are expecting. And we're trying to work out how the hell we're going to get in there because yeah. we are minus an engine. Yeah, so on the second day we were doing a bit of motor sailing and the swell was really quite hard only about eight to ten knots of breeze so we're making very slow progress so we had the engine on just to give us a bit of oomph through the waves but also 
Yeah. <laughs> One wave just pushed us a little bit too far over and we're on a heel for a little bit. And consequently, we got an air bubble in the fuel system because uh, the engine started spluttering and I looked at the fuel gauge. The fuel gauge said it was empty, even though it's got half a tank of fuel in there. Uh, obviously, all the fuel has just gone to one side of the tank and that knock with the wave was just enough to run it dry for a, a little period. So I've had a few attempts at trying to re-bleed the fuel system with unfortunately no success. I gave it a good crack for about four hours and tried everything. At the end of the day, I think the actual little fuel pump's not working, hence why I just can't re-bleed it. So then when he stopped trying to fix it, he went for a well-deserved sleep and I jumped on the helm and was just steering along and then it just suddenly went to a halt. We lost all wind, we had two knots of breeze and it was just... Zero. Well, yeah, zero knots of breeze, basically. <laughs> So we were just drifting and I was just driving thinking, what is the point of this? So um, what I did was I set my timer for 30 minutes, just repeatedly, got into bed and um, every 30 minutes got up to check whether the breeze had magically come back. So we were just drifting in the middle, we were kind of on the border of Africa and Italy. So we are drifting in and out of Africa and Italy and um, yeah, that lasted all night. Oh, and it was just, oh, it was the most uncomfortable experience. Like, we'd put the main up to stop the boat rolling around so much mm. and then all you could hear was just the boom and everything and just like crank, in the crank, crank, crank. I thought all our cutlery and everything had just been I shattered. thought everything had smashed, but everything was intact. You just got no, oh, that went, oh, went on for from, seven hours. Everything was intact, apart from my laptop fell down. <laughs> and that's the charger. It still works though, so don't worry, we're not going anywhere. You're still, <laughs> still going to get your YouTube episodes, just struggling a bit with that one. And then at about 6.30 this morning. Um, Mr. Weatherman over here, he can smell wind. It's so funny. He will, in our old house in um, in Sydney, he used to look out the window and he'd be like, come on, something over here. In 20 seconds, watch that flag, the wind's gonna shift. And he'd always be right. And he literally woke up at 6 a.m. this morning and went, it's here. Started off with about four knots of just consistent breeze. It was just enough to get us moving. And that built to about six knots for the first couple of hours this morning. And, oh, you had to have the patience of an angel to be steering. Like, it was just like fingertips and it was just like the most minute little movements just to get the momentum of the boat going. Painful. And like, just every little wave just trying to nurture it through because like as soon as you'd hit a wave bang stop out of action for another five minutes the breeze has just been steadily building all day yeah we've been blessed we've had a really good sail today so yeah i i think we should be so grumpy and just out of it today because of the no sleep but we've been happy bunnies because the sail has just been exquisite now we're just steaming into Sardinia about seven knots on the beam, just boom! Boom! <laughs> Trying to work out options into how the hell we're going to get in there. So option A was to sail into the marina and try and tow the boat into the berth using our dinghy. <laughs> the other option we have is just to try to find somewhere to anchor in the dark, uh, spend the night there, then in the morning uh, either dingy in or call on the radio and try and get someone to come and help us and maybe tow us into the marina. Oops. And then option C is probably hang around till the morning light and then go in and anchor somewhere or try the marina but we don't know whether this wind's going to stick around and whether we're going to be making work for ourselves by doing that. Yeah, exactly. Basically between a rock and a hard place. Luckily we're still friends. I actually can't believe we're still friends. Oh, no, oh. done so well. And we 
can't wait to crack open a Sardinian beverage and get some proper sleep. Um, we're not going any speed at all. Do you want me to pull the jib in? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And leave the main up, yeah? yeah. Way too dark, so I can't actually show you. How much grace do you have? Four knots. It's died off again. Okay. He is going to attach the dinghy to the anchor bridle, and he's going to try and tow us in our little six horsepower dinghy because the breeze has completely died off and we're just bobbing along just five miles outside siding the port up shit creek without a paddle so to speak yeah that didn't work <laughs> we had a couple of goes it just it was like as much use as a chocolate teapot really so I think we're going to call Coast Guard and try and get a tow in, but I'll report to Captain about that. Hey Captain! Hello! Oh, that didn't work. Oh. We've cracked it guys! <laughs> Jackson's in the tender behind pushing Avalon. And we're going four and a half knots, so I think that's pretty successful. We did. The saddest call. thing is. The saddest thing is. That our little six horsepower engine pushes at the same as our big diesel engine. Yeah, we called the Coast Guard, but there's a fee involved, and we thought there's got to be another way, and here it is. coming in on a sailboat being pushed by a dinghy at midnight. got there in the end, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. My favourite bit of it was the moment when the, um, the marinero realised that he was tugging us from behind and that he was going to get crushed when Stern went to the dock and we didn't have an engine to be able to get out of there, so... And he was pulling us in there so fast. Oh, so fast. But no, we did it. Yeah. I'm so proud of our little dinghy. Pushed little, us in. Little Maz got us through the whole yeah. thing. And we have organised a mechanic tomorrow, haven't we? Have we? 
<laughs> and the mechanic. Oh, yeah. really? Yes. So you've just you're gonna use YouTube? Uh, we can get a technician, but it's pretty easy of what we need to do. Okay. So, yeah. Sounds good. Give it a crack. And then wait for the next thing to break. <laughs> Boat life. All right, we're gonna go and check into the country and pick up Jackson's friends Ben and Luke. You. How, how do you know Ben and Luke? I uh, met the boys on the Miami sailing team when I was studying in America. So Xanthi has got two personal sail teachers. Yeah, three. Sail instructors. I got three sailing instructors. I got yeah. you and them. So it's gonna be good. Let's do it. All right. So for those of you who are as freaked out as we were about the oil spill that Avalon found, I thought I'd pull together some research about how it came to be and what you can do about it if it's something you care about. So large scale oil spills happen really infrequently, but when they do, they hit the news like crazy. Small oil spills like that one actually happen multiple times daily and no one ever really hears about it. So is it normal? Yes, it is actually completely legal. Ships are legally allowed to dispose of oily mixtures through ballasts and bilges, or they can dispose of their engine effluent into the ocean. So the International Maritime Organization has formed a convention to monitor the pollution of our oceans by ships, and that's called MARPOL. Now MARPOL have set out stringent guidelines of what ships can and can't dispose of and under what conditions. Unfortunately, a lot of ships do abuse these guidelines and countless illicit disposals of oily mixtures happen in the ocean every day. Marple has designated the Mediterranean as a special sea area as it's fairly prone to pollution. It's a very closed system and even though it only accounts for 0.7% of the water that covers the globe, it houses 30% of the world's marine traffic. So for these special areas, there's slightly more stringent regulations in place and the concentration of oily mixtures that is permitted to be disposed of into the ocean is 15 parts per million. Now the oil spill that Jackson and I found in the Sicily Strait was very visible and very thick and took six hours to scrub off Avalon. So for us that sort of dictates that maybe that vessel did not act in line with regulations. So can you do anything about it? The answer is yes. Like I said, you can report this bill to MARPOL. You would need to give them as much information as you possibly can. So if you can look on your AIS and get the names and MMSI numbers of any vessels near you, which way they're headed, their compass over ground and their state flag, and also the coordinates where you found the spill and any other vessels around you. Then the other really important thing are the environmental conditions around you. So the swell size and direction, the wind speed and direction, the cloud cover, um, the approximate temperature. The other thing you can do is donate to organizations who dedicate their worlds to this topic. Our favorites are Greenpeace and the Surf Riders Foundation. I'll put links for those guys below just in case you want to support them. And hey, look, this is all the information that I managed to rustle together about what we can do about this. If anyone out there knows anything more, then please leave a comment below so everyone can see it. And um, yeah, if you've got a really detailed response, then get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. And thanks for caring, Ocean Warriors. <laughs>